Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, September 7th at 1 a.m. Mountain Time 2020. The models are in, and they're not funny, and they're ever-increasing and ever insane and that's the big story but we'll get to it what's the other big story la county records highest ever temperature 121 degrees crushing the 119 degree record earlier except there's fires everywhere so there's that keep calm it's boom time <laughs> large hail produced in some spots in the twin cities yes overnight sunshine humidity to take over sunday which will be a fun day after they got clobbered. No, they really didn't even get hit. Oh, the picture's not there. This little tiny, oh, there it is. Little hail, little half dollar hails. Not a big deal. The big deal, PG&E warns of power shutoffs to 103,000 customers due to strong winds. That was today. But later, California blackouts could hit up to 3 million as grid managers declare a state of emergency. Power outage U.S. showing just under 50,000 without power in California. But take a look. 138,000 still without power in Louisiana after Laura. Can you believe it? 25 deaths also attributed to the same hurricane. So there's that. Record cold temperatures and rare September snow arrived this week. <laughs> what a tweak. Where am I? There I am. Grand solar minimum much? I doubt it. Record cold temperatures and rare September snow. Ho, ho. This week. What a tweak. Now, the models have been fluctuating drastically. An early taste of winter with record cold temperatures and snow. Yes, snow after the 121 degree record in L.A. County is on its way for the Rocky Mountains. A strong September cold front is set to drop out of Canada meridional flow much. So this is the breakdown of the jet stream, which we predicted three years ago to be occurring right now, right on time. And this will bring, bring dramatic temperature swings to large portions of the country as many deal with record-breaking triple-digit heat over Labor Day weekend. Nowhere is this temperature roller coaster more pronounced than in Denver, which is thankfully north of us. They're actually going to get potentially get down to into the low 20s. This is unprecedented, not seen in decades, where a 60 degree drop in the city's high temperature from 99 degrees down to 37 degrees is expected in a mere 48 hours Sunday to Tuesday, which is their lose day, as well as many others. And there's that huge trough dropping all the way down into Mexico. Such a front will bring rare measurable snow to the Rockies. In fact, higher elevations are now predicted to get up to 30 inches. And this article says eight. So they're a little behind the times. This would be one of the earliest first measurable snowfalls on record in the area, which make it scarier because the new GFS is showing epic proportions. Ending farming for thousands of square miles which typically doesn't see the powder to begin until piling up into October in this region. Now, frost advisories and freeze warnings are also possible, and we're going to show you those up in Montana. Or is it Wyoming? I don't know, but there's lots of them. Meanwhile, excessive heat will continue to impact the East Coast and West Coast, while the most coast here in Colorado freezes our <laughs> off. Take a look. From Casper to Denver, it's going to be a September to remember. And here's the outlook. Cooler in the middle. It's about as... Anyway. Wyoming weather, get ready for snow. It's coming. Mountain snow, below freezing, overnight temps, and powerful winds in the forecast for East Idaho. Who knew? Well, I just told you, so now everyone knows. And there's a picture of snowflakes. It's like all the Biden voters over there or something. The recent roller coaster weather in East Idaho is forecast to continue this week with mountain snow and below freezing overnight temps, 
expected to start Monday evening. This is the beginning as it dips down into the mid craton. The culprit for this latest blast of winter is a cold front that is forecast to arrive in East Idaho on Monday, bringing potentially destructive winds to the region, freezing temperatures and the end of farming as we know it. The track of the coming storm is very undecided. Now this is a good piece because it's true. I've been tracking it every six hour model update for the last, let's say 72 hours, hours of powers. And it started weak. It ramped up to something ridiculous. It's coming down to something more measurable and then it popped up into more ridiculous nature. So I'll leave you links to this so you can see the progression of the forecasting and the modeling, which shows total crop loss for a lot of people. GFS model showing no less. And we'll just walk you through the progression here. First snow shows up, up in Alberta and Saskatchewan, BC even, on the boundary of BC and Alberta. Dip south into Western Montana. And what we're showing you here is the snow lying on the ground Tuesday morning. So as Tuesday progresses, the entire state of Wyoming gets overrun and almost achieves blizzard conditions. The entire eastern part of the state, southeastern part especially, where cattle ranching is king, it's going to be buried in up to 16 inches of the global warming goodness. As it dips down into Colorado, south into New Mexico, all the way to Albuquerque. This is going to be unprecedented. The amount of damage to seed crops and hay and other things out here. There is no third cut. Putt, putt. But this will be a record-breaking storm and there is not a peep from the mainstream. Why would they? Come over to weather.gov. Heat and fire weather in the West. Cold snap expected in portions of the West Monday night. A dangerous heat wave is underway across much of the Western U.S. We just told you L.A. County had its record highest temperature ever recorded at 121 while it's surrounded by fire. Anyway, critical fire weather conditions are forecast through the midweek for look at all the pink and, and maroon and shit. This is insane. This is like 50 mile an hour winds everywhere. So don't flick any cigarettes out the window, please. All you sheep. Bah. But overlaying on these heat warnings right here, excessive heat warnings all the way over here are these blues, winter storm warnings and watches and a freeze warning for the entire state of North Dakota. Yeah, your summer of bummer, 2020, hello. Now, conversely, a strong system from the North will bring much colder temperatures as well as accumulating snow to the higher elevations beginning Monday night, extending all the way until late day Wednesday in my region. Northern and central Rockies and portions of the high plains will be pummeled. And there is the model. So there you have it. Now we're in Archuleta County down here and it's expected to get up into the 24 inch range for the highest peaks, which would be Wolf Creek. They're predicting eight to 12. It went from one to two to two to four to four to eight. And now we're at eight to 12. So it's a developing storm. This is something that can't be predicted. These are unprecedented times. Waning magnetosphere, breakdown of the jet stream, highly suspect meridional flow, which is literally going from the tropics up into the Arctic and back down all the way to Mexico and back up. And this is going to move east. So we're going to follow this forecast until late in the week when it hits the east coast, which is not the coast with the most, by the way. Active tropical cyclones looking quite suspicious. What I mean by that is that it is the peak of hurricane season 
and Tropical Depression 17 is coming right at us. So tomorrow I'm going to be giving an update on where 17 is going to make landfall. And I haven't missed yet, so stay tuned for that one. And then we have another depression, disturbance number two, has a 90% chance of cyclone formation in 48 hours. So, so this is going to be a one-two punch. Two hurricanes headed towards, yes, the East Coast, the most to lose in the summer of bummer. Two more hurricanes laid up right now. Tropical Depression 17 followed by disturbance number two will forever be remembered as, uh, I don't even know what's next in the list, so. Is it M, N, are we at O, are we at P? Seismic update, holy macaroni. The entire planet has lit up. Look at this. This is definitely, there's, there, there's even earthquakes outside of the box there. Now, when I woke up this morning and I saw the mid-ocean ridges with so many quakes and aftershocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Schleville, Schlevaza, every single spreading plate with activity, I knew the earth was swelling. It's getting bigger. And then the increased activity is moderate at best. So four to six magnitude is everywhere. And we're just coming off some six mags in Chile. And we've got six mags over in the Philippines. We had six mags in the mid-ocean ridge here in the North Atlantic, the mid-ocean ridge here in Central Atlantic. My bad. Look at this boomer over here on the Craton. 5.1 in Iran. Kashminishten. What does that mean? Well, it means we're heading towards a solar polar reversal of the sun. And we have, in the next six days, it's going to be a flurry of activity. If we have any space weather or any other perturbations, buckles, bounce. Holy shit. Are aliens hiding in plain sight? Of course they are. Haven't you seen the lizard video where I've seen that? It's true. Definitely reptilians. The moon is getting rusty. Now, this is actually science. Scientists say the same reaction you probably did when they reached this conclusion. It shouldn't be possible. And this is the hematization of iron. So you go F. Fe203 to Fe304 because I have specialization in mineralogy. I remembered that from 20 years ago. So you go Fe203, Fe304, iron to iron oxide. You go to iron to magnetite, which is the beautiful red mineral that bleeds red on all sedimentary deposits in the red beds, hematite. And in, well, the red beds, hematite. So, and now stratigraphic, stratigraphically speaking, these cycles, the hematatic cycles, are more typically in the 400,000 year range to 1.2 million. So they're the longer periodicity catastrophic cycle, the hematite cycle. But according to this study, the moon is getting rusty. Now, the problem with that is that there's no atmosphere, there's no oxygen, and there's no water. And you need air, O2, H, you need air, O2, to oxidize Fe203 to Fe304. The oxidation causes, happens in the presence of water. So you need water, air, and iron to make hematite. Now, when did that happen on the moon? So, apparently, the earth is flat and the moon has water. That's my final analysis. Probably not. The earth is round, by the way. Crestone Energy Fair happening just this weekend. Now, it continues to be a tradition in the San Luis Valley for over 30 years. And it brings together innovative ideas about 
alternative energy, alternative building, and alternative farming, which is what we all need to be thinking about moving into the future. Alternative ideas on how to survive and thrive, be sustainable, resilient, self-reliant, and any other word you want to put in there. But if you're waiting for some kind of a moment to be awoken, you've missed it. Because in just a few months, bread may cost $20. Olives are already two cans for $5, which is an increase of 100% in one year. I know because I'm a chef in my own mind. But I cook every night. And I know the price of things have been increasing ridiculously. So there's that. If you want to know how to survive and thrive in the future, all you have to do is watch the live stream of the Crestone Energy Fair. If you live within 150 miles of Crestone and you don't show up, well, that's on you. And the Crestone Energy Fair is the longest running sustainability fair in the entire country. And it's in such a remote place with such unique people that the information shared here well, it, it should be priceless. And we should charge like 50 bucks to view it, but it's free. Just like everything that I will be, be bringing to the fair. All the seeds I give out are free. All the food, all the produce, free. 